Okay guys, so we are here for our third English video and uh, this will be about the black current trifle. Actually, this is the first English video we ever do about our beers. So far we only had guest beers, oh, so yeah. Yeah. right now I'm stoked to talk about something I'm just completely aware of. It's just no, yeah, because we always talked with international brewers and we really felt inappropriate. Exactly, I always felt super inconvenient. No, it's a bit awkward, but, uh, but this is a collaboration with Brudo Budapest for the Collab Fest. Happening next week. And, uh, and we thought that we need to do this now. You deserve a proper explanation of what this pastry grows a thing is about. And before we start to talk about blackcurrant trifle, let's just try to summarize our first two pastry gozes. Yeah, let's, let's have a journey in time <laughs> of the, the brief history of, uh, of the Imperial Pastry Sour Ales. Uh, so our first idea was uh, this year, uh, in the beginning of this year, that we should do something that is strong, but also fruity and sour. And, uh, and since pastries, uh, pastry Imperial Stouts are really uh, in the hype now, we thought, hey, why don't we uh, have something that inspires from a traditional Hungarian dessert that is uh, Silvás Gombóc right here. Silvás Gombóc is the, is the thing not your wife or girlfriend does, but the kind of thing that uh, your mother or grandmother does. Well, not even your mom. I think that's, that's really a grandma uh, yeah, style. Yeah. That, that is uh, a dumpling. A plum dumpling? Uh, a dumpling that is filled with plum, that's rolled in breadcrumbs and baked, and, and then it's eaten uh, with powdered sugar and cinnamon. Yes. So, because we made uh, uborka salata that's, that is uh, cucumber salad with AF brew, uh, we thought, hey, why don't we make something sweet? And, and this one, I just couldn't imagine with, with the chocolatey coffee aroma. So we thought, hey, why don't we do something else? And, uh, and this came into mind. And, and we premiered this beer at, uh, at the Budapest Beer Week in May. That was fun. And it was a lot of fun. Uh, I couldn't believe my eyes when I, when I saw the ratings and what people think about it, because uh, they went nuts. Uh, it, it finished number two, I think, on yeah, the, yeah, on the on second two, with, uh, with a really high rating. Oh, wow, just look at the color. I mean, w here in the brewery, this release is already sold out, so I haven't really seen it in a while. Oh, this, is, this is batch number one, right? Yeah, this is, uh, this mm. is batch number one. This is batch number one with 12% alcohol, which is really strong uh, compared to any sour ales. And... Uh, Wow. It, it hasn't lost its touch. No, no, no. I just, I just have so many feelings towards this. I just. No, the cinnamon is still there. Exactly. Which is, which is really great because it's, I it's, thought it's, it's the rare. Will go it's away. rare that the cinnamon stays this yeah. long in the beer. And uh, and the pastriness is coming from the malt. So we are not using any aromas for this. We are just uh, we are just playing with beer. We are just playing with malts. What we use though is uh, is lacto sugar. I think lactose sugar is really important for this one, so it gets the creaminess uh, and it doesn't get too sour. Like it, it, it kind of like Silvash Gombot, the yeah. you know, like the major inspiration. Yeah. But I believe we talked enough about this, so let's just yeah. let's just. Oh, oh man! It's. Uh, I still cannot hate this. It's sweet and I'm, I would, and that's the fun part because you should hate this. It's sweet and sour and full of plums and I just I just cannot talk. Sorry. It just, it's just it's, it's, it's ridiculously and high and, in, and, in and calories. And right right now right now this is a bit warmer than it mm -hmm. should be so that's why we can detect the cinnamon so good but it's just uh, full of taste full of juices full of fun like Silvash Gombo. so I believe we have managed to capture yeah this traditional Hungarian dessert in just an excellent the, way. Just the idea behind the style was something that goes well with the fruits, with the, with the pastries that are fruit, uh, 
space that, that are revolving around some kind of food. And we thought that if you have any pastry that goes around food, usually it's not that good to combine that with coffee and chocolate, right? It's just, it's just shocking and, and really good. Um, I would love to focus on this and finish this later, mm -hmm. but we are running on time, so let's just show the second yeah, one. Yeah, because we are, you know, we are really busy, like we are a busy brewery. Actually, we have an event here right in front of the brewery, but that's another story. You will see it in another video. Let's focus on Rakoti Turos. Rakoti Turos. Okay, so this was, this was the grandma. This was the grandma stuff. Rakoti Turos. My mother does excellent Rakoti Turos. Right. That's okay. one of her specialties. So when she learned that we're doing Rakoti Turos, she was like, that was your idea. <laughs> and I was like, I wish it was my idea, but unfortunately not. So yes, let's so, talk about this. So the main thing is that we got, uh, we got hyped about this style. And we had this confidence that we could do it again. But also, we were worried uh, that we couldn't. So we thought, hey, we need to do something. Challenge accepted. We, we need to do something else. We need to try this. If we could achieve it one more time, maybe that one, that, that one brew was a coincidence. And, and we just couldn't rip the style off. Um, so we did this. That is. Another really traditional dessert, not, not the most popular one. No, because it's not easy to make. Actually, it takes some skill. It's, it's, it's more like a hipster dessert. Is it? With, uh, I've never seen myself as a hipster. Who can tell, man? So it's like, it's apricot. It has a really thick, sugary top that is like heavy. It's apricot and cottage cheese. And, uh, and the top is, is, uh, is egg white. Yes, that's egg right. Egg white with vanilla. Uh, one of the other important ingredients, I think, in this style is vanilla. Yes. Because vanilla gives Indeed. it the, the pastriness that, that, that would be the base of the beer. And uh, you, you, I don't see if you can do this with vanilla ever, this style. It it's just revolves around vanilla and, and what vanilla does, the strong, malty, sour character to the base beer. And, uh, and after that, it's just a lot of, like this really ridiculously huge amount of fruit. All three of these beers are close to 100% fruit content. Uh, but you know, that's, that's the essential of the style. You can you can just you know go faint-hearted with something like this. So let's uh, let's see. There um, there was a debate after this, uh, which one was better, and people really wanted us to remake Siavaj Gombot. Exactly. But there were some people that that liked this one. It it was it was really one. close. I would mm -hmm. say like. 40% of the people prefer this and 60 prefer it. But this Gombos. is a light pastry. Oh, yes. And, and the light eggy uh, vanilla foam on the top. So it's not that dominant. It's, it's more like an apricot sour ale with a huge alcohol content. Exactly, but it's still fun to drink and, and easy to enjoy. I mean, this, uh, this is more shocking, like mm. a dessert, and uh, this, is, uh, this is more like an extreme beer. Yeah. This is this is how I would put this, but I was it just it just didn't have that extra ingredient like the cinnamon that lifts up the whole recipe. And maybe because because rakoti turoshi is not that mainstream as sivaj. Everybody mm. everybody's just you know like you have really good childhood memories of sivaj gombos. But this this is uh, this is sold out for a long time. Now. Oh yes yes. And um, I was saving this back at home just uh, just for this video. I'm I'm actually a bit more impressed about the first one, even though it is older than this one, I think it, it works better. Apricot was a riskier choice uh, because somehow those fruits that are meant to be sour uh, are working better with an extra ingredient or something. But to and be honest, I would, I, I would have a hard choice and I would more 
prefer this. Really? Yeah, that's right. Okay. It's just. Well, this I is this know. is the beauty of it. I don't know. Maybe maybe because I love Rakosi to wash. You know the. It's just desert. bonding with your mom. Man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. This is it. I don't know. It, is it that? No, it's not. And uh, and when we got the invitation for uh, for a collab fest with Brewdog, we thought that this is the style what we need to uh, what we need to continue on with. And we're, really, uh, we're really proud of these releases, no, and, and we've been thinking yes. about like what we can show of Hungary and what we have in common. No, yeah, because the thing is that that since we have not seen this style ever before, we made Silvaj Gombots, we really felt it as it was our own, exactly, and our own idea, and and that made the bond with us, and 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 we were super proud, and we thought. Why don't we try and, and do something that is international, that uh, that everyone can relate to, uh, except us? Let's be honest, right? Because yeah, black currant exactly. trifle is something that most Hungarian people have never tasted. But I managed to work as a, as a waiter in England, and and I and I did, and I did serve a lot of trifles back then. So I thought. Uh, Let's make a black currant trifle because people really love trifle there. And black currant trifle was just overwhelming when we brewed it. We thought it will be too much. We thought that we reached the, the our limits. We've, we've we, been a bit worried, to be we've, honest. We've been. I mean, I mean, super we, worried. Just because you know, like, like. If we screwed it up, and if we're just sending out, but I mean, a beer look, look at this to Scotland, that won't make it. And let me tell you, I have a few bottles back at home of this. We actually, this is a Kegley release, uh, but we made a few bottles that I brought back to home, and to this day, this is my favorite Mad Scientist release. I've uh -huh. been just, I've been just, just keeping this <laughs> like, like a treasure, man. I just friends are coming over, and I'm not showing them this. Now, that, that was very important for us because we thought that this is our chance to reach a lot of bars uh, that we could never reach. Actually, we're selling beers to 16 different countries now. 17. We just have seven. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, but yeah. No, but, 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 but not the, normally not the bars that we can reach with Club Fest and with the help of Brewdog. But people. Uh, it's the people. It's the people that are going to Brewdog bars because they like the vibe and they are committed to that certain feeling that Brewdog promised them years ago. And uh, they believe that Brewdog is still keeping the promise, which is really awesome. And these people are in love with Brewdog bars and are going to Brewdog bars in the world wherever they go. I believe, we're not, is, I believe we're not letting them down with this. I think we will not uh, be letting them down. Let's just, let's just take this. Let's, let's do this. Oh, wow. Beautiful now. Yeah. It's just berries, like berries everywhere. And it's just really dry in the finish. You, the the, the mouthfeel, the, the thickness of the beer is close to an imperial stout, I would say. And, and the intensity of this is, I think it's almost, you know, they should make these styles illegal in beer tastings <laughs> because they block out all the other flavors that come after them. You should finish with this beer. If you want to taste an IPA after this beer, you're done, man. You're not standing the chance. No, but I mean, look I at mean, this, look at this would, foam. It's why, would you, why would you drink an IPA after this? No, no, boys, boys and girls, seriously, you should finish with this beer. It's, uh, it's super intense, and I'm not trying to promote this. I'm just trying to you protect tried, you. You haven't tried this in a long time because I was taking home all the bottles. No, I haven't. You, and no, I haven't. Just, it, it, right? it, it, it's just wow. No, because uh, because we brewed this uh, a month ago because they had to pick it up, and we had to be ready in the beginning of September. Exactly. And the collab fest in, is in the middle of October, so. It, uh, it had to mature another one and a half month. This is why we, we were not comfortable with brewing a modern IPA, 
because of the long waiting time. Okay. And of course, IPAs, I mean, uh, I'm a huge fan of IPAs. But you we, will never win. We have win. a nice range of IPAs, like Jam 72, Liquid Cocaine, and so on and so on. But, but, but you this never is, win. This you is never something, win with an IPA. This is something special. The pastry goes a style. It's just, uh, you know me, I'm, I'm really critical, even, even with our beers. But I'm definitely a fanboy uh -huh. of these releases. And, it's and just, uh, I'm just so happy to see Black Crown Trifle happening. And I just uh, cannot wait to see what... How it well, does on the yeah. festival, on, and because because it will have a leaderboard. To, to be honest, I don't really care about how it will perform on the festival because I'm oh, just geez. no 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 no. I'm just I'm just really happy with how this turned out, and I just cannot wait to see our new pastry goals. Okay, releases. but let's be honest with this. We're just happy that we did good and we tried our best and stuff. We I'm we're going we were going for the win, man. We, from the first moment, we thought, hey, boys, we can, we can win this thing. And, and we want to make the best beer that has ever left this brewery for this festival. It was a bit enthusiastic for us. But uh, I'm just a simple guy enjoying my pastry goals. But can you do it? My question is, can you do it in any other way in, in brewing? No, can, we, you, can you make never... it in brewing internationally if you behave in any other way than this. We never, just we never play for draw. Man. It's just, just wanting to win with every beer that comes out of your brewery. I think this is... I'm about that life. <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, let's hope that, uh, that people will like this. And uh, I just have to say that, uh, that even though uh, it could be too much, but uh, as Marty McFly said in Back to the Future, interesting reference. Your kids, <laughs> <laughs> your kids will love it. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is a really nice catchphrase yeah, well, for the end. So I think. Uh, thank you so much for sticking with us. Uh, it's been a pleasure to talk about our pastry goes as, and I just cannot, I just cannot wait to see a future pastry goes as. I believe this style for us. It still has a long way. No, we're, we're, already, we're already in the making of a new one, but I'm not telling you not just anything, because I think you don't even know it, right? But I know, because I, uh, I have a huge part in that. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.